It was funny. I actually thought it was an English film, okay. like a um, yeah English language film, until the day I got on the plane yeah. and I was somewhere over the North Pole, and I opened up the new edited script that was all in Hindi. <laughs> What did I get myself into? And like 11 days later, I was on set acting in front of Prabhu Deva in a language I don't speak. It was, yeah, it was still, it was, still terrifies me. Hi and welcome to Midday.com and joining us today, we have a very beautiful guest. That's Lauren. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So obviously we are going to look at your journey and let's start with your childhood because oh, not wow. many people know that. Okay. So what was your childhood like? What was Lauren as a kid like? Oh my God, Lauren as a kid. Okay, so my dad calls me sweet one. Mm -hmm. So anytime I answer the phone, it's hi sweet one. Oh. And it's like the best two words in the English language, I swear. Yeah. But my mom calls me wild woman. Mm -hmm. So those are my Gemini dual like personality, <laughs> like charms, yeah. <laughs> sweet and wild. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Um, but I was very much like a tomboy. I have two brothers and I just wanted to do everything that they were doing and yeah. I wanted to play sports and, yeah. and everything. So my mom was like, let's get you into something girly, do dance, you know. Um, and yeah, that's how I jumped into it. But ironically, I hated it mm -hmm. when I first started. Okay. I don't know, I've told this story a few times, so maybe you guys know, but like, I yeah. just thought I was the worst dancer in the world and well, actually okay. begged to quit. Mm -hmm. That's Could you strange. imagine? Yeah, <laughs> it's no, been my can't. whole life. Yeah, I uh, can't and thank God my mom wouldn't let me because she's uh -huh. like, no, honey, like I paid for the whole first year. Yeah. Like you will go to those dance classes, finish the year. And then if you want to, you can quit after uh -huh. that. Okay. Yeah. And so how did the passion for dance start? When did you start falling in love with it? It definitely wasn't that first year. Mm -hmm. um, I actually cried every single dance practice okay. and it was a very specific moment. Um, we had this year end recital where there was about, I don't know, like a thousand people in the audience. Yeah. And my mom like held my hand and let go and let me walk on stage like okay. that. And then she ran into the audience to watch me. She said it looked like I was having fun and I didn't mess up, but she figured I would be devastated, you know, yeah. after just like I was after every dance class. So she ran back to get me. And that's when she said I walked off and I was like, oh, like I still like when I think about it, look at the, do you see the chills? Does that lens go that far? I have chills everywhere. Cause I like somewhere remember that moment yeah. of getting off stage and I don't know if it was the lights, if it was the applause, if it was just the adrenaline of it all, yeah. but I was like, I have to go back out there. I have to go back out. And uh, my mom had to stop me. I was trying to run back on stage in the middle of the next routine. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, oh my God. And she grabbed me and she said, that's when she knew like, this yeah. is what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. Okay. And then I did. Then I got really serious. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, oh, I wanna be the best. Yeah. And I have to train and train and train. And I, I did more training than anyone around me. It was kind of uh -huh. crazy. Yeah. And of course, you've been on the, one of the biggest dance shows through the world. That's so you think you can dance. What yeah. was that experience like? That was tough. That was, um, it, was uh, it was interesting because it was tough watching it on TV the yeah. first two seasons and be like, oh, man, like I got to be on that show. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't old enough, so I actually assisted one of the choreographers okay. uh, the first, or sorry, the second season. So I would sit in the audience and watch some of my choreography on the show, being like, oh, it should be me, it should be me. And then the next year, I was finally 18. Um, I had moved to Los Angeles by then, and I auditioned and made the show. But it was taking someone at 18 years old, like it's it's tough. It's yeah. a lot of pressure and they put a lot of stress on you. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, like um, I'm sure we'll get into the differences between, you know, the reality shows here and there. <laughs> but I always like to say like here, you'll be rehearsing for an entire week, like as many hours as you want. Yeah. And the filming day is like 15 hours, like it's madness. <laughs> yeah. But there, you only get six hours of rehearsal. Wow, okay. Like, that's it. And then you're on stage, um, and uh, it's a two-hour taping. Yeah. So you start at five. They have the clock on in the back, so mm -hmm. the host calls for a commercial break. Yeah. You go to the commercial break, and then it goes five, four, three, two, and then the host is back on, and you're there. So everyone in that building is on it. There's no place for error. So that's cool. Like it yeah. really taught me this like amazing foundation, you know, yeah. to sit on. It was cool. 
and i've been on the sets of chalak dikla jo which you were a part of yes. also and it's crazy <laughs> like i mean it's absolutely madness so what was that experience shooting in india for a reality show i mean the first time i'll never forget it the mm-hmm. very first episode yeah. it was a 15 hour 16 hour day actually yeah. i thought we were filming the entire season in that day <laughs> i was like but i only have one routine mm-hmm. how am i going to film the whole season yeah. but i was so used to those 2 hour yeah. like shoots and i was like oh, okay this is a little bit different yeah. and there's so many moments and then moments and then more moments and i've learned to like super love it cuz it's just fun yeah. you know it's really fun um the things people do here are wild like you wouldn't see it back there the sets the props the like the glitz and the glam it's too cool yeah. now Oh shoot, I'm saying this film is forever. But now I look back at like so you think you can uh-huh. dance in like the reality shows over there and it seems so tame. Okay. And I'm like, "Oh, they need more props." <laughs> they okay. need more yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think being dramatic is a very Indian thing. Mm, <laughs> yes, like right on the forehead, yeah. drama. <laughs> yes, that's true. And uh, yeah, moving your whole life to India, you know, when you took up your movie and of course dance shows as well. So I'm sure that was not an easy decision. You had to think about it. Are you prepared for that? So what was that? No, there was a uh, that was a very internal feeling. It was actually um a huge night in my life. I was up for the lead of Step Up, one oh, of the Step Up okay. movies. and it was the night that i found out i didn't book the lead and it was between just a few of us okay. so i'd gone through the process and it was like down to the wire and it was the night i found out i didn't book it but a friend of mine did oh, okay and i was so devastated i remember like crying on the floor just thinking my life was over mm-hmm. drama it was already yeah. in the cards for me i guess but i um i i thought everything was over and i so clearly Mm-hmm. saw myself acting and dancing in a film. Yeah. So it didn't make sense to me that I didn't book it yeah. cuz I so deeply felt it. And then um I actually in the moment I couldn't be happy for my friend because yeah. I was so stuck on myself. And then uh I realized that's just ego and I just learned about the ego. I was like mm-hmm. 20 years old. And uh I was like, "Oh, that's ego." I think I can work through this emotion. Yeah. And I literally like for 4 or 5 hours like all into the night. It was like 4:30 in the morning. I felt it leave my body. And I was like, I don't care about myself. Like yeah. I'm happy for her. I tweeted Facebook MySpace like did the whole thing. I was back then. Yeah. Yeah. Um did the whole thing wish her luck and it was the second I sent all those messages um an email alert came up. on my computer. Okay. And it was 2012, so people mm-hmm. weren't emailing at 4:30 in the morning yeah. like, you know, we weren't addicted to our email back then. But I get an email from a UTV Motion Pictures that I'd never heard about saying things like Ramo de Souza and Prabhu Deva, the Michael Jackson of India, yeah. and I was like, "What the? Who calls himself <laughs> like what is this?" And I did all the research and I was like, "Oh wow, this the all these people are real and yeah. Ramo's a part of uh, Dance India Dance, which is like so you think you can dance and it was just a different world." Yeah. And they said they were doing India's first ever 3D dance film mm. like Step Up and I was like, "Whoa." One door closed and the next one opened and yeah. it was because of all of that energy and drama <laughs> that I was like, "This is for me." Yeah. And um it was terrifying. Yeah. So I built up my career over there, but um I saw that ledge like that cliff and I was like it's just time to jump. Yeah. And I just agreed to do it and I just jumped right in. And were your friends and family surprised? I'm sure they had no idea as well about this movie and the people. So. No, I woke my parents up after I did the research mm-hmm. and I woke them up at like 4:35 in the morning. I was uh-huh. like, "Guys, I'm going to India." Okay. And they're like, "Shut up, go back to bed." <laughs> like, yeah. They did not want to hear from me at uh-huh. 4:30 in the morning. But I just knew I was supposed to do it yeah. and um it was funny. I actually thought it was an English film, okay. like a um yeah, English language film until the day I got on the plane yeah. and I was somewhere over the North Pole and I opened up the new edited script that was all in Hindi. <laughs> What did I get myself into? And like 11 days later I was on set acting in front of Prabhu Deva in a language I don't speak. It was yeah, yeah it was still it was, still terrifies me. 
and were you ready for the craziness of an indian movie set no i'm still not ready <laughs> but you still just do it huh. uh actually no that's a lie i am ready now cuz it mm. uh now it feels like home yeah. now i've done so many things i know the differences like back yeah. then i was just like what is what what is this what is that uh-huh. like i had no idea um but no i, I definitely wasn't ready and i wasn't ready for how we were filming too mm. cuz you took a girl from Scottsdale Arizona that lived in Los Angeles for 6 yeah. years and then we were shooting in the slums uh in Worley yeah. for like 3 months so like that was a whole thing and uh-huh. I don't know if anyone knows this I don't know if I ever told this story but there was some article that came out it didn't label me back then but cuz I'm an American girl and I was playing an Indian yeah. um I wanted uh to stay tan I don't remember this article you don't remember this article <laughs> shoot <laughs> Did you know this was me? Yeah. Oh, shoot. I thought people didn't know. You remember this? I went, I went on top of the vanity van, start tanning. Yeah. And I thought this is fine. No one down there can see me. I just see the sky and like that's fine. But in the slums, the entire here like village, like everyone came to the cliff to look at me. The yeah. production were like banging on there. You have to get down. I was like, well, "What's a big deal, guys? Yeah. It's just such an American thing to do." Yeah. Yeah. I sure. think it's funny. I can't believe you remember that. I do. In oh. fact, because uh, I don't know I Yeah, but I just read up that time and at that time it was pretty, you know, like I mean, funny for us also because you never heard something like that. <laughs> <laughs> We just do random things yeah. too but like even the concept of tanning isn't something that like yeah. people do here so like True. that in itself is like what but I just went on the top of my vanity yeah. so normal for this California girl but <laughs> and so what was the life after that because you know you did uh, get some big movies and uh, what, were, what how was that change in your life Um it was weird because after I shot the film I didn't know if I would come back cuz I had a full life I had my career over there in the yeah. US Um but it was in the time between wrapping the film and when like the trailer came out um everything was coming to me like India like just a uh, Indian family moved in next door so I was hanging out with them um I was falling in love with Indian food so I would yeah. order all the time and share that with all my friends and Oprah went to India yeah and like all my f- cast members would call me and there's just something like so much more warm about yeah. people in India than in Los Angeles mm. so my heart just kept getting pulled yeah. so then i saw the trailer come out and i was like oh this is a hit film like for sure yeah. and i came out and i saw like the billboards everywhere and did the whole like you know pr run and stuff and just yeah. and i fell in love with the cast and um Ramo and like everyone it was like okay let's let's do this let's try to make this a thing mm-hmm. and i actually had one month left on my visa I don't know if people know this either, but uh-huh. I had one month left on my visa. Uh-huh. I was just going to make it happen in yeah. that one month or else I was just going to go back to the US. And I just would go out and network and try to meet as many people as possible. Yeah. And it wasn't really happening and then all of a sudden like 2 days before my flight, hmm. I was literally probably never going to come back. Yeah. I got chalak. Okay. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I'm supposed to be here." Yeah. So I actually I took that flight cuz I already paid for it. Mm. And I took it, I went back and I put all my stuff in storage. Okay. So it lived in the storage unit for like 8 years <laughs> cuz I yeah. was like, "Oh, I'll go back, I'll go back." But I don't know, one project after the next and then it just became yeah. home. Like it just this is definitely my home. Yeah. And uh, you did uh, speak about this phase, you know, when you were not in the right mental space mm. to take up more work. So how right. was the dealing with that? I'm sure a lot of people go through that as well and relate to your story. Yeah. So and we are glad it has changed now that you are back and yeah. all set to return. I feel like people say to me but I feel it in my own body. I feel the light back in my eyes. Yeah. Like I feel the easiness and the fun and the play and I think for a while it became like I needed this and I needed that and oh why is that not happening yeah. and it was like the grip of it all mm-hmm. it was so unhealthy and and then there's something about like you you do a performance or you do a film and yeah. if it's really good the next thing you do has to be better 
So mm-hmm. you're always like punching up, you're always one upping yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I'd get all these opportunities and I was just, I remember feeling choked. I was stifled with yeah. like this, you know, oh my God, what if it doesn't outdo that one? Yeah. What if it's not as good? <laughs> what if, what if, what in it? I'd let go of so many opportunities and uh, you know, you never know who you're going to meet, how that changes your world, your life and stuff. Yeah. So I like just was really down on myself. Um, and then, you know, I had so much work. I had so much love from people. Um, I felt like I was on the top, but yeah. I didn't have anyone to come home to. Yeah. So we had these crazy shoes, these crazy hours, you know, emotional scenes, like emotional performances or whatever, yeah. or being in the hospital and like, you're just not having your family. And I know that touches yeah. most people here because yeah. most people stay with their family. True. And I'm a yeah. huge family person. and. I would see my parents get older and older and I wasn't there yeah. and my nephews were born and I didn't know them. I was like, oh my God, like it was so much. Yeah. And then something just snapped in my head. I remember going, okay, wait, my parents taught me you work hard, you mm. train your butt off to reach here yeah. and then you'll be happy. But that all of a sudden I was like, oh, that's not the recipe. You yeah. actually nothing outside, no job, no relationship, no shopping, no food, no nothing outside is going to make you happy. You have to be happy. True. And then I went, oh, who am I? Yeah. Oh, I actually haven't stopped moving since I was seven years old to actually mm. figure out who I am without what everyone thinks I am. Yeah. You know, when you're known, you walk into a room and everyone looks at you and they think they know who you are, yeah. but they don't know who you are. Yeah. And then I wasn't able to have these types of conversations because oh. people would just be like, you're such a good dancer, click a selfie. <laughs> like, yeah. That was it. And then they would yeah. run off and I'm like, oh, but we're not actually talking. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I felt like I needed to go for a second. I'm like, this is my life. Yeah. And I'm so like confident in who I am and what I offer and what I do and yeah. my talent that I can go away, I can get sorted, and then I can come back and yeah. it can be something crazy wild and new yeah so did handling the attention also because people can be pretty starstruck mm. so did that come uh, difficult as well so i think um it, it was it was hard for a while when like i just felt like i couldn't really talk to people like i just remember going through the airports and people just wanting to come and click that selfie yeah. But I'm such a talker and I love people and I like, I mean, after this, I'll ask you like your whole life story too. <laughs> like, and I love that so much yeah. and communicating and I, I didn't feel like I had that. Okay. People were coming up and clicking photos when no one was like, hey, you want to go sit down and grab coffee yeah. and, and talk? So I felt really lonely. But I mean, obviously the love from people, it's, it's incredible. Like a lot of times I'll walk past people and they I can tell I'm like I know they know who I am <laughs> but I don't hear it until they're five steps behind me they go Lauren 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 that was Lauren yeah. and I'm like that's cute next yeah. time come up to me like I'll give you a hug and like talk to you and yeah. whatnot but it, it is cool like I, I did train my whole life to be yeah. something and really I wanted to be inspiring to other girls and stuff to do what they love so yeah. when I hear that it is great <laughs> And it's always been great. It was just for a while. I was very sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially during the pandemic, that break, did you feel it kind of helped you to recharge and, you know, get all energized to come back to India and start uh, fresh again? Kind of, but like, ironically, I took the COVID pandemic before everyone did. Okay. And so okay. I took the two year break to uh, get myself together. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, every, the whole world did. Okay. So yeah. my manager was telling me how ironic, like, you yeah. know, everyone's having to sit home and sit with themselves and yeah. ask themselves these questions. I did that on my own. So I was actually ready to come back and then the pandemic hit. Yeah. So instead of a two year break, I got a four year break. So mm-hmm. it was a lot longer than I wanted. But <laughs> yeah, I got to like really sit in it and um, and yeah, study new things. Yeah. And, you know, any message you'd like to give people who are like maybe who are going through a similar phase, you know, where they are at the top of their game, but still have those kind of doubts, you know, am I good enough or how do I handle this pressure? So anything you'd like to share from your own experience? Yeah. I mean, everyone's journey is so different. I just would say, like, ask yourself real questions and try to silence the noise. 
Like when I was going through this process, I went off social media for like 11 months. Okay. Because I didn't want to put anything out and I didn't want to know what you thought, what you thought, what you thought. Like I didn't want to know. Mm. You know, I've been hearing that my whole life. So I just wanted to ask myself these questions and figure out what do I think about these things. Mm. Um, so it's, it's t it was very tough in the beginning because you're letting go of something that you really built yeah. and you have that fear that it will never be there again. And that fear is right because it won't be there again. It won't look the same that it was before. You're letting go of something to move on to something else. Yeah. And as long as you stay true in that and um, have enough faith you know, in the process and in yourself, yeah. you will come back in some new fashion. So for me, it was very specific what I wanted to learn and uncover yeah. Yeah. and stuff. So I did that. And now when I come back and I'm working, now I get to do it for fun. Like mm. before I was trying to hold up this yeah. status, like people would, I'd walk around, they're like, you're India's best dancer. And I'm like, that's the worst thing you could ever say to me because now I feel like I can't fail. Yeah. And now I'm like, screw it. Like, I'll try this. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I also don't know really how to fail because I put my all yeah. into things. But um, yeah, I would just say, um, let go of what your parents think, what society thinks. Just go after what you truly want because yeah. um, it's really just one life. I mean, yeah. I do kind of believe in reincarnation, but this is our one life. Like, True. screw it all. Like, th what society tells you to yeah. be or to hold, like, screw it. Just, just do you. Yeah. And what other kind of projects we can expect yeah. from you now? So now coming back, because, um, well, before coming back, I kind of jumped into digital content. Mm -hmm. um, I think we all did because the, the yeah. pandemic and just the way the world's going. So I spent like a year in Los Angeles after the pandemic doing, um, uh, like producing these videos, choreographing them, uh, doing the costumes for them, getting the sets and the props and casting. And so I was like, oh, I, I see what I'm doing. I'm learning how to produce and direct and edit and do all this in like a very short little 30 second to a minute package. Yeah. Uh, and eventually I want to do this on a bigger stage. Mm. So now I've come back and when I get show opportunities, I'm choreographing them, okay. which is really cool. And it's kind of become hard not to choreograph it because I want to take what I've learned over there, which is a lot of that structure and like demanding, like if, if your arm's supposed to be there on five, like it's there on five. It's not like five in, <laughs> like yeah. then, you know, it's yeah. there. And that, you know, when you see performers in the West and stuff, it's really sharp and tight. Um, so I want to implement that in here with the looseness of Bollywood mm. and show everyone something totally different. Yeah. So that I'm really excited to do. Yeah. So there's a film offer on the table. Okay. And we were supposed to shoot it a couple months ago, but it got pushed. Okay. And it's not announced yet mm. um, which project it is. So I can't say, yet, but uh, if and when it happens, it'll be massive. Okay. And that's choreographing. And then I'm reading scripts right now to act. So getting back into acting and choreography and uh, probably judging one day soon. So okay. just all the good stuff that I did. Yeah. But now I'm just having so much more fun. <laughs> and any advice for dancers, you know, girls who look up to you? Um, I, or even boys, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> boys and girls. Um, I would say... Uh, train in as many different styles as you can. Mm -hmm. I think that was always my, you know, saving grace and stuff when I would audition for things back in the day. Yeah. Um, I would be able to book every single job because I trained in all these different styles. Yeah. So if a choreographer gives you something, I can zone in and I can do it exactly like they want it. Yeah. But then I put my own style on top of it. And it, so they saw it, and then I picked it up quickly. Uh -huh. um, so that really helps when you do all the different styles. So, you know, it's, it's easier to jump into, say, like hip hop or, you know, break okay. dancing and stuff when you have like a ballet foundation. But if you're just a freestyler, you know, haven't taken class, if you want to try to jump in something else and work in the industry, it's going to be pretty hard to mm -hmm. pick up that choreographer's steps and match everyone. So. Yeah. I would say that and um, just go for it. Like I remember so many auditions and so many times that like I could have been shy in the back. Yeah. Um, like I bumped into Usher. I'm sure oh. everyone knows Usher, right? Before yeah. <laughs> his audition, I was late because I had another audition. So I came late huh. and it was this little alleyway. Like I had to squeeze past his big car huh. and I'm squeezing and all of a sudden the door opens and I'm like, oh, and Usher sticks his head out okay. and he goes, you're pretty late, aren't you? 
And I was like, me? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, uh, I'm, I, I should get, get in there then huh. and stuff. And then I actually went out the alleyway, went around the other side of his car and stuff <laughs> and went into the audition. Oh. And everyone had already learned all the choreography. Yeah. And the mirrors are just full of sweat and stuff. You couldn't even see yourself mm. in the mirror. It was wild. And they were going into groups pretty much right away. So okay. I had literally less than five minutes to pick up this whole routine. Uh -huh. And then Usher walked in, and I swear, he was just looking at me the entire time, like walking <laughs> around to the front. And they called for group one. And I was like, you know what? I have to go in group one. Because I can't come late, I can't come with that energy, and then go stand in the corner and be like, no, no, I'm still, I'm still working on it. Yeah. I was like, shoot, I have to go in group one in the front. <laughs> and I went through round and round and round and round and got down to the last two girls. Uh, okay. And I was one of the last two girls. Okay. And so we were battling it out. I ended up not getting it, but mm. he came and he shook my hand. <laughs> He's like, well done, we did it. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. That's so lovely. you just have to go for it. Don't take no for an answer. <laughs> Even... Um, uh, I, I just grabbed my hair because I, when I auditioned for Shakira, it was my mm. first big job, uh -huh. and uh, they said that they wanted girls with long hair. Okay. And I just cut my hair short, oh. and it was for the Grammys, huh. and I needed that job. Yeah, I'm so. And my hand just went up, like before I even knew. I was like, <laughs> "What am I gonna say?" Uh -huh. And she goes, "Yeah," and I go, "I have extensions." Yeah. Like hair extensions. I didn't, but it was Los Angeles. I know I can go on any street corner and get extensions. Yeah. I'm not leaving without this job. She goes, okay, you can stay. And then everyone's like raising their hands. She's like, oh, okay, just stay. I ended up booking the job. Wow. And then they gave us hair extensions. <laughs> so you never know. Just don't take no for an answer and yeah. just have that energy. Like, I got this. True, true. No, yeah. that's actually pretty inspiring. You know, when you got to do it, you just got to do it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, also yeah. since, you know, you have started working again in India. So how have you kind of, you know, uh, adjusted to maybe the language? And is that something you also worked on, the culture and stuff like that? So there are things that used to annoy the crap out of me. Uh. Um, just not being from here and just like, what are these rains for like four yeah. months? Like it's crazy. Or the fact that it's so hot here. Yes. And it's just so funny because I just looked down and I had like all this sweat going down my <laughs> Like, but I was just like, oh, that's sweat. Too bad. Like, whatever. Before it used to annoy me, and now I just embrace all of it. And yeah. that's the best thing that I can say for like where I'm at. Like, all the things that used to kind of take me down, or mm -hmm. like on shoots where I'm like, oh, this could be, this could run better, be tighter, or yeah. whatever. I'm like, is what it is. Yeah. And you just go with the flow. And it's so much better. That's again more advice to take. Don't you know, go mm. the opposite route where I learn the hard way of like, no, it needs to happen like this. Yeah. It just is what it is. Um, so the culture, also I feel more at home here than I do in the US, mm -hmm. where I didn't exactly know I was coming back, coming back. Yeah. Uh, I just came back in April for a couple jobs and I'm like, let's see how this feels, like <sighs> after the pandemic and everything. And just like instantly I was like, oh, like this is it. And I know everyone, and if I don't know them, they know me. Yeah. You know, so I, I go to a Starbucks and they're like, hi, Lord, like, what do you want today? And I'm like, oh, like, I feel like everyone's family. Yeah. Which it's ironic that I didn't feel like I had family before. And I'm like, oh, I actually have a whole country of yeah. family members now. But um, there's that, the food, like, I've adjusted to so much better. Yeah. The language, I wish during the pandemic I would have yeah. just sat my ass down and just <laughs> learned. Because that would have been great. I'm still working on it. Okay. But the the diction's coming better and, and I'm understanding more. I just yeah. need to get over people giggling and laughing at me when I speak. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. nice. And are you in touch with any of your co-stars, people you have worked with before? And, you know, like, how's, like, are they like family now? Like, friends yeah. like family? They've always been family. Like, mm. and it's crazy because we just always bump into each other. And I saw a ton of them. Uh, a few weeks back and it just we looked at each other we're like uh, ABCD was like 10 12 yeah. years ago but it feels like it was yesterday <laughs> and even like our camaraderie together felt like it was like we never left mm. um, so I celebrated my birthday with a lot of my co-stars oh, and okay. yeah I just I don't know it just it feels like family and okay. you look at my phone book and I spent my entire 20s here mm -hmm. everyone in my phone book is pretty much from India I okay like, oh, I'm supposed to be here <laughs> All right, it was lovely having you. Thank you for doing this. Of course, nice chatting with you. 
subscribe to midday india get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon